I've got a confession to make. I have cheated on my own brand. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Dale of Dale's Leatherworks. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Uh, real quick, be sure to like, share, subscribe if you're new here. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it. So today's video, we're going to be talking about Blue de Chauffe backpacks. If you've been following along on my channel for a while, you'll know that I make my own backpacks out of leather the old world way. But Blue de Chauffe has been a brand that a lot of my friends have collected from and purchased from in the past. And so I really wanted to give them a shot and just see how another maker approaches the craft. My backpack designs are really just based off of one example that I purchased years ago. And uh, so I kind of wanted to see how other makers do it. And in particular, uh, the French. Blue de Chauffe has a lot of different bags and different offerings like wallets and other things like that uh, and clothing but their bags are probably what they're most famous for and uh, this bag in particular is called the 25 liter woody backpack and the color is wheat stone washed now i went for this one because my buddy nick at stridewise he's reviewed a lot of waxed cotton canvas backpacks in fact when he came to my studio, AKA my basement, to uh, film a few videos, he had one. He had, I believe it was a Filson backpack. And uh, it was really cool. It had leather straps, it was all waxed canvas, and it was just super badass, super rugged military adventurer type of a look, which is what I'm always going for. That's always the core approach in my style, my aesthetics, my day-to-day -day carry. Having this channel and doing this for a while, I'm always hyper-focused on what I have around me. Similar to the concept of wabi-sabi, you know, having surrounding yourself by nothing but really high quality things. And that's what I believe in. And that's why, you know, guys like us that wear salvage denim, that wear good quality boots, we are cheating ourselves by not having a good quality rugged bag to go with it all. Bag is not just a women's thing, it's a dude's thing too. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. <laughs> so I carried this bag around all day with me yesterday to field test it, see what it's capable of, and I really like it. Uh, the design is really ingenious, and it's really French, if I'm being honest. Like, it's very delicate, it's got very f refined details and refined workmanship. Everything does appear to be machine stitched which is okay. They are a company, they need to make money, they can't hand-stitch this stuff. Unlike my bags, they're all hand-stitched. Speaking of hand-stitched backpacks, I still have four of these bad boys available on my website. This is my Scout in Oxblood Double Shot. Uh, I made a batch of four, none of them have sold yet, but as you can see, hand-stitched everywhere, hand-riveted everywhere. This is my own design, and uh, I kind of wanted to bring it into the frame today because I wanted to kind of show like when I design something, what it comes out looking like. Um, I like it to have like sort of a World War II aesthetic about it, old world feel. And that's what I feel I've accomplished here in this build, the Scout backpack. I have my day carry Scout backpack here. I've been using this uh, 
pretty exclusively for about a year and a half, maybe two years now. Yeah, probably a year and a half. And uh, it's made in Wicket and Craig Latigo Veg Tan for the hull, and then Seidel's British Tan Double Shot for the accessories, top flap, and everything else. So I wanted to make something that looked historical. Yeah, the functionality, it's all there. I really love it. And it's really patinated up beautifully, especially on the bottom there. You can see it's really goldened up quite a bit. And down here as well. So, all leather. Now, what's the downside to leather? Why would you pick wax canvas over leather? Well, there's a couple reasons. First off, wax canvas is lighter. Now, me personally, I don't always want to carry something light. I know that sounds silly, but I like my stuff to be heavy. I like it to be robust and manly. That's kind of why I gravitated toward making leather bags to begin with. So A, it's lightweight. B, it's going to be very breathable as well. A little bit more breathable than leather, which I always emphasize the breathability quality of leather. Leather is very breathable. If it gets wet, let it air dry. It'll moisture wick like it was intended to do, like Mother Nature intended it to do, to wick moisture out. Um, but that said, a leather can retain moisture a lot more than cotton can. So this wax cotton canvas is gonna both breathe better, but it's also wax, meaning that water will just bead off of it. So you'd have to really saturate this thing for a long time to get water to impregnate into there. And then once that happens, all you really have to do is wait a few hours uh, in a dry room or in a dry environment and it'll that'll clear up. Two, the other advantage to having wax cotton canvassing as opposed to leather is leather will actually rip easier. So if you were to snag this on say like a nail or something, it's much less prone to ripping. Whereas if you snagged leather on something real sharp, uh, it can it can rip open, it can it can damage the, the garment. It seems counterintuitive, but wax canvas is gonna be a little bit more durable in certain respects. Now, if you're uh, Indiana Jones holding onto the back of a, of a truck speeding through the desert and you could either stand on leather or on wax canvas, I would expect the abrasion to wear down the wax canvas much quicker, obviously. But it just depends on the application, what's damaging the article. And in some cases, wax canvas is actually gonna be more durable. If you had to hang your body weight from this, you'd probably be pretty secure. If you had to hang your body weight from le leather, it depends, is the leather a uh, super tight grain? Is it a consistent grain? If it's not, if there's an area of weak grain in there, it can rip. I don't use any leathers like that that would rip easily, but I'm just using that as an example that could happen. First and foremost, let's talk about the design. So uh, I really like this this square piece of leather here. It doesn't serve any function. It is just sits down and it's got these two oblong punches in there. It just looks really cool. It really is the centerpiece of the bag, really draws your eyes in aesthetically, and it gives it a really cool look. I feel like without that there, it would look plain, frankly. The other cool thing, is this carry handle. So this operates as, as a secondary carry handle if you wanted to carry it alongside you. And I feel that when you do, it looks really cool. You're just holding it and suspending it down with your arm. I feel that that has a really rugged, manly look to it. Now the back, believe it or not, this is the part of the bag that I always find most interesting. In a lot of pictures online of backpacks, you only see it from the front or the side or have it on. I was really excited to see the back. Particularly, I was really excited to see how they did their anchor points for the straps. So on mine, I do something similar. I stitch a secondary panel of leather right here, and then I stitch in two anchors, one for each shoulder strap, which are double riveted in at the base to just never come undone. But that's how I did it. I wanted it to be uh, durable and also look really good. In the blue to show, they also do a leather panel. It's not a square like mine. It's actually more of a diamond shape and it's really cool. So they have the anchor piece here, full veg tan leather. I looked at where they source their leather. It's They source from both French and Italian tanneries. Only two though. There's one in France, one in Italy. They don't name the tanneries. Uh, the leather is very nice. It's a, it's a veg tan, I could tell, sort of a walnut color. And instead of two D-rings like I do, I do a one D-ring for each strap. That's more work. I just think it looks better. I see a lot of bag makers doing this where they use one D-ring here as the anchor point for the two shoulder straps. And that's very smart too. I really like that. You save a little bit on the materials. It still looks beautiful. Yeah, everything is 
finished with some stitch lines. All riveted points are gonna be your base base support, but then the stitches are gonna act as backup. Now, one thing I will say that I'm not such a big fan of is they are using snap rivets here. So these are not the really heavy duty raw brass rivets that I use in my bags. These are like, they have more of a tin feel to them. Now that said, for this application, it's fine. You don't need something so overdone. In fact, when I showed my bag to a leather worker, he said that I was using saddle grade rivets in my backpacks. Now, for me, I wanted to overbuild everything, so I double rivet, or as you can see on the blue to show, single riveted there, and again with, with snap rivets, which are quick, easy, they're cheaper, but again, for this application, it's they're gonna hold up fine. I um, promise I'm not trying to do this to uh, <laughs> show my bags off. <laughs> I'm just s sort of exploring the different uh, construction methods. So, but yeah, I do double rivet my shoulder straps, and then I double, double riveted each of these anchor points as well. So yeah, I normally double rivet things, except for I started single riveting the base roller buckle here so that it can, so that you can turn it actually, and it'll it'll work with your body. You could turn it up and turn it around if you need to, because what was happening was on more than one occasion, I would double rivet those base straps, those base roller buckles in facing the wrong direction, which is a nightmare to fix. <laughs> you live and you learn. Sometimes we need to approach things from a practical standpoint. And that said, most leather workers that I see, they're, they're using these snap rivets. There's nothing wrong with them. They're standard issue. The other thing that you'll notice that I think is really cool, and I get this request constantly, are you gonna start using zippers? Can you do zippers? I don't do zippers. I stick to old world design. I've also been asked, can you make a wax canvas bag. My answer to that is also no. I don't work with wax canvas. I've used it in the past as a lining, but I'm doing all hand stitching and I consider myself a leather worker. I'm not a fabric person. And so it's just not my area of expertise. And truth be told, I'm not really interested in making bags out of wax canvas or incorporating zippers into any of my designs. And so it's kind of limiting, I know, but if you did want a bag with wax canvas and zippers, well, Blue de Chauffe or Filson or Satchel and Page, those are all gonna be solid options for you. But I really like the convenience of this zipper. If you have items that you need to, like quick access to, like a passport or sunglasses or something, you could stick that in there. I, I stuck my uh, Everyday Carry Copper flashlight in there. This is my Raylight that I got from edcsupply.com. I also put in one of my Douglas field lighters in there as well. Beautiful. Love my lighters. I have a lighter obsession, by the way. Not to give any spoilers away, but I've just ordered some authentic World War II items that were used in the war, including a trench lighter, an authentic trench lighter. That'll be here soon, as well as, if you know my channel, well, I might have ordered some boots as well. <laughs> and some other things are on the way. Really cool things. This pocket extends to this center stitch line. So you've got a good amount of, of space in here to work with. Once again, first and foremost, what comes to my mind is a passport would go in there very nicely. These are YKK zippers. These are some of the highest quality zippers you can get. In fact, Rocky Mountain Leather Supply, I believe Weaver Leather, when they're selling zippers to be used in leather projects, they sell the YKK. It's sort of like the the Rolex of zippers, some of the highest quality zippers there are. And then I really like the way that they put a leather panel around here as well. That's very artfully done and thoughtfully done. Uh, really complements the aesthetic of the bag. It would look naked without that. I think the zipper by itself would just, would not look good. So that's a good job there. So one thing that I wasn't such a fan of when I saw this and got it initially was the shoulder straps. So as you can see, the shoulder straps are full grain leather but then the stitched felt lining in here. I initially wasn't such fan of it and walking around with it, I could see why they did it. It's a cool design feature for sure. So there's a few benefits to felt. A, it is actually naturally flame retardant. I don't know if I'm allowed to use that word, but <laughs> we'll see how it flies in the comments. Um, felt also isn't woven. So the cut edges will not fray. And that was one of my concerns when I first saw it. It's like, isn't that gonna start fraying over time? Apparently not. Felt is also made of natural fibers and it is not woven together. Instead, felt is created by high levels of pressure 
and heat with water added to the process to compress them into what we recognize as felt fabric. The production process makes felt a durable material with a dense consistency as the fibers become permanently compressed and interlocked together. It is thought that felt originated in Asia around 5,000 years ago. And felt is made of wool fibers, by the way, which I go into the benefits of wool in some of my other videos, but essentially it's great at retaining heat. It's also very, very moisture wicking. And even if it's wet, it keeps you warm. And I assume that they used felt here because it would absorb moisture from your arms, say it's hot outside, and wick it out. All right, as for the rest of the functionality. So I really like that the arm straps have uh, swivel snaps attached to them. So you can snap them on and snap them off. That could have a variety of benefits. The other really cool thing is, when I first got this initially, I thought that I'd have to uh, undo these adjustment straps to open up the bag, but no, it's this little snap button snap enclosure, which button snaps, that's another thing you will not find in, in my bags. I just, I don't use them hardly at all. But this carry strap opens up into two different pieces. You've got the one on the back that's attached to the anchor point for the shoulder straps. This leads to a magnetic button closure here that connects and closes off. So it's easy to open and then you've got a decent amount of room down there in this outer pocket goes all the way to the base. So you could stick more stuff like say a laptop for quick access and then just magnetic snap that back down. And then in the front, it's got another little compartment. Uh, it only extends down to the base of this square here. So it doesn't go down super far, but something that would be good for this would be your sunglasses for sure, because it won't get crushed by your body weight or anything like that. You could easily stick some sunglasses or another item that you need quick access to. The roll top is opened by opening up these side latches, which are held in place via a, a stud here. So you just pull it open, pop it open. And uh, I like the design of this. I've done something similar to this with some of my side cargo compartments. You punch a hole and then you use an oblong punch to punch a little hole beneath so that the stud slides through the hole. Then you pull it up and it adjusts and holds, holds in place. But you just pop that open. It's supported by another D-ring here, and it's also supported by another leather loop here. It just looks really cool. But that leather loop serves another function. I'll get to that in a second. Same on the other side. And see, this leather loop holds this strap so that when you slip it back through the D-ring and pop it back down, it's got this little bit of support, added support to the overall component. If you needed to, you could hang stuff from this, you know, like a carabiner or something like that. So you could like hang a water bottle through a carabiner there or from one of the D-rings or one of them down here. Either way, it's a choose your kind of adventure sort of thing. And then the coolest feature in my opinion to this is the roll top. Now I make roll top backpacks as well. I'll talk about that in a second, but there are benefits to the roll top, namely because when you roll that down, the contents on the inside of the bag, if it's raining, are now dry. They're safe from the wetness. So the roll top is also fastened with a magnetic snap. And let's check out the inside. So what's neat here is on the inside, it's unlined like I typically like to do with a lot of my bags. I don't make my bags unlined for the most part, though I will include a lining in some cases, uh, similar to how boot makers do it. Some of their boots are unlined, some of them are lined, and there just doesn't seem to be a really good rhyme or reason to why or when they do it. <laughs> it's just all on the uh, preference. Yeah, so the, these inside pouches are actually not anything functional inside the bag. These are just the pockets from the outside. So this flap here is just this pocket and this other flap here is just this back pocket. So it's good to know that the contents of your items will also be waterproofed via the construction. One thing I'll, I noticed too, really nice, is they put a fabric finished edge on the inside of the inseams and all the inside edges so that 
they're protected and that they won't fray over time. On the inside of the bag it says 85% cotton canvas, 15% cow leather. And then additionally, we've got an internal pouch which has a zipper. And on the outside it says Blue de chauffe, savoir faire de proximité. Know how to do things close, locally? I don't know, what's that mean? It says the date of fabrication is December 12th, 2023, and it was, the name of the artisan is Jason, or Je, L Lauren? Jason, Lauren, Javier, Javier. I think it's Javier. <laughs> Those French in their fancy writing. All right, and so what's cool about this is this has two button snaps that it affixes to the inside of the back. All right, so then to close her up, we just snap the magnetic snap back into place. I find that pointing the D-rings out is useful after you roll the roll top down. And boom, good to go. Then snap this enclosure back as well. Good to go. Um, oh, I also forgot to mention that these shoulder straps are also adjustable, which is nice. I have one of my roll top backpacks here. This is an expedition pack, and this is in a leather called Sapici. It's an Italian leather. It's a veg tan, and uh, as you can see here, I put my roller buckle adjustments at the base. And yes, I believe this is one of the bags that I messed up on. See, this this piece is double riveted. At first, it was faced the other way, and you just gotta you just gotta remove the whole item and then try to rivet it from with, do the rivets when the bag's already finished, which is really hard. I gotta stack my marble pieces in there and get it in just the right position to be able to take a rivet. It's very difficult once the bag's already uh, sewn up to the top. So. But yeah, that's my roll top. Similar idea, which is the waterproofing idea. And yes, this does have a lining on the inside as well. But I'm trying to get away from linings, I'm trying to keep it fairly rudimentary, but that said I'll still I'll still do linings into the future. But yeah, as you can see, every component in my bags are old world construction. Old world components something that could have possibly existed 150 years ago. But hence, no zippers. And here I have, on my expedition packs, I do incorporate the single anchor piece, which attaches to an O-ring and both shoulder straps attach to that. But to make it more stable, I incorporate these two tension relief straps. And then, yes, this carry handle also serves as a handle to carry it around with. So, but enough about my bags. Let's talk more about Blue de Chauffe. So yeah, wax canvas, it's an absolute, it's an absolutely amazing material for the outdoors. And especially if you're looking at hiking long distances and you want a light, lighter weight pack, then wax canvas all the way. Lugging around heavy leather, because trust me, I take my backpacks on hikes, lugging around heavy, heavy leather, it looks cool. It is kind of heavy, so if you can hike in a leather jacket and in an all-leather backpack, then good on you. But if you want something more lightweight, this is definitely going to be more of a summer pack for me on a super hot day. The benefits of this is going to be that it's going to be just so easy to work with, say if I'm going to a beach or if it's really hot out, then this will be uh, the most practical thing to grab because of that wax canvas. So this bag also comes in three other colors. A navy, which Blue de Chauffe is mostly known for. It also comes in a drab olive color and a dark olive color. Let's see, what do they call these? So the drab olive color is called khaki stonewashed. And then there's dark khaki stonewashed, which is the dark olive color. And then there's the navy blue, which is self-explanatory. Blue de Chauffe is a responsible leather goods company with a political conscience. Since they came into being in 2009, they have been campaigning for fair, considered manufacturing that respects people and the environment. Because we cannot keep endlessly producing in a world with finite resources. Because it should be possible for work and well-being to go hand in hand. Because we want to leave this planet in better shape for future generations. Discover the seven founding principles of our commitment to a new fashion of production. Together we will make these commitments a reality and ensure that they become tomorrow's standard practice. All their products are made in France. Every snip, design, and stitch is made at our workshop in Saint-Georges-de-Lusensons. 
I hope I said that right. Number two, artisanship. Every item from Bleu de Chauffe is unique and tells the story of the artisan it was made by. Manufacturing in moderation. At Bleu de Chauffe, we know we are not going to change the world of business. Four, savoir faire with a bright future. The artisans at Bleu de Chauffe are purveyors of a cultural heritage passed down through history. Number five, sustainable consumerism. A Bleu de Chauffe bag is made to be looked after, kept, and handed down from generation to generation. They also promote environmentally friendly materials and a zero ecological footprint. Another reason why I chose this bag to review is because a lot of my friends they review the the mailman bags or the business bags or the the messenger style bags the around the shoulder bags now I believe it or not I have some messenger bags I just don't use them I just don't really like them I actually like carrying around my gear in a backpack all day whether I'm going to work or traveling or something I, I don't like a messenger bag it's it's they're just not for me I like something that goes around my shoulders that I could wear on my back it, I don't know why I just feel like it's more practical maybe I grew up going to school with a backpack on so I have that sort of outlook on backpacks a preference for backpacks because yeah messenger bags they they get in the way of my stride I've just never found them super practical not to mention you can't carry a whole lot of stuff in there I don't know I guess women like their purses but I, I like something that goes around both shoulders that I can support with my my frame I don't know maybe the single shoulder strap throws me off a little bit and some people ask me Dale what the heck do you carry in your bag well first and foremost coffee when you're caving you need three sources of light when you're working you need three sources of coffee so I have coffee in there I have a lot of supplements I have another Raylite raw brass Japanese flashlight of course Another thing I always carry around are camping utensils. You know, if we're talking about the environment, you know, think about all the plastic utensils people use and discard. I don't use any. I haven't used a plastic utensil in years because I carry around titanium camping forks, spoons, and knives. They're easy to carry around. I never throw them away. There's a life hack for you. If you want to uh, save the environment, well, <laughs> invest in some cool eating utensils. I also have a... Uh, titanium spork that I carry around as well. I just can't find it and all this stuff rummaging through. And then uh, I have these, these Glow Rhino tritium vials. <laughs> the, uh, they are radioactive though, so I don't know if I should be, really be carrying those around. Anyways, that's an EDC nuts pipe dream in there. So in summary, this bag is $389, so just shy of 400 bucks. Is it worth it? Heck yes it is. This is gonna be a backpack that'll last, last you your lifetime, for sure. It checks every box. It's stylish, it looks good, it looks at home in the wilderness as it does in an urban environment. It's lightweight, it's practical, you got a zipper on the side, and yeah, if you watch my channel then you're probably used to buying $500 boots, so you owe yourself to get a good bag. And for that reason, I will leave a link to the Blue to Show website in the description below. Check that out if you are so interested. Let them know Dale sent you. <laughs> and that said, I've, I've observed several other of their bags as well. Their messenger bags are super nice. Uh, everything's really refined, really well finished. Beautiful work by expert artisans. They have mailman bags, which is like their messenger bag. One of the ones that my one buddy has is the uh, navy blue postman bag eclair. Absolutely beautiful. They also have messenger and satchel bags. I believe those are called European carryalls. <laughs> those are 307. Those are a very old world design, very beautiful. They have business bags, some that are very much inspired by the Woody backpack. They're called the Remix business bags. Those are gonna be in wax cotton canvas. They also have leather ones, the Zeppo business bag. And the folder business bag, that looks like more of a proper briefcase type of a thing. Though it doesn't look as structured, but yeah, that's probably the closest they come to a briefcase. They do simple totes. They do camera bags. Oh yeah, the camera bags. Those are the ones that I've seen on, on Instagram my friends have. The Arl BDC camera bag, navy blue, yeah. Those are pretty iconic, and ooh, they even use leather washers on their rivets. I always like to see a leather washer. To me, 
<laughs> that tells me they know what they're doing. Oh, they have belt bags too. That's the proper word for a fanny pack. That's cool. Uh, motorcycle bags. Ooh, those are badass. Wow. And they also do larger duffel style bags that they call travel bags. The cabine travel bag, the Zephyr travel bag, the hobo travel bag. All really, really nice work. Really well designed, very French in feel, elegant, but at the same time, a really nice rugged spin on all of it. I'm a huge fan. So once again, the link to the Blue to Show website will be in the description below. So go shop them if you're interested. I think they're doing just a phenomenal thing. The benefit to them is they have all this stuff ready-made. Unlike me, if you want a bag from me, you might have to wait months. I could realistically only make one bag a month because they're 100% handmade, they take forever, and they're more expensive. If you're buying Blue to Show, you know that these are going to artisan craftspeople who are passionate about what they do, very skilled at what they do, and they're readily available. So that's definitely one thing that I will say. Like, you can get this stuff within a week, it ships from La France, and boom, you can look cool and feel rugged and carry rugged at the same time. So with that, I'll shut it down. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Leave me your thoughts on this incredible woody backpack in the description below. Is there anything I missed? Please let me know. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see y'all in my next video.